What's up guys, welcome to the Moody channel. Today I've got something very special for you guys, so I really hope that you are buckled up and ready because you are going for a ride. There is a new event coming in patch 10.15 and that one is called Time Rifts. This event is located in Thaldrastus between Valdraken and Tyrhold. This event is up every hour at the full hour. So how does it work? In general, the event is about enemies from parallel universes who have opened up portals to our world and we need to fight them back to their own timelines and you also enter their timeline and fight them there as well. There are seven alternative worlds that are tied to the Time Rift event and these are Asmorn, which is an alternative world where the Scourge has taken over, Azeroth, which is an alternative world where the Robot has taken over, Asmerloth, which is an alternative world where we are instead the Murlocs. Azerath, which is an alternative world where the demons have taken over. Azkroth, which is an alternative world where the Black Empire has taken over. Warlands, an alternative universe where there is an endless battle between Alliance and Horde and it never became any kind of peace there. Alderoth, an alternative world where the titans rule and there are no threats such as like Scourge or anything. Before we dig deeper into that, we first need to take a look at what the rewards are and the new reputation faction tied to the Tyrish event. So we can talk about the rewards when we are explaining the different event parts. Tied to the Time Rift event are seven vendors. Each vendor is tied to one of the seven alternative worlds. These vendors have one mount each except for the Murloc world, Asmeloth, which has none, and also the Horde vs. Alliance world, which actually has two, one for Alliance and one for Horde. Each vendor will also have one pet, each vendor will also have one trinket, whereas the Horde Alliance world vendor will have two trinkets, one for each faction. Transmogs, with themes tied to each alternative world, and I've done a video on that and gone through all those vendors and how they look, all those things, you can, I'll put the link below on that video. Some of them sell reputation insignias in which their alternative world resembles a reputation faction in our world. So you can literally buy rep in those vendors as well. When it comes to the mounts, they are recolored or similar mounts we have seen in game and we have right now but from previous expansions. The Asmore vendor sells the mount called Reign of Scourgebound Vanquisher. The Azeroth vendor sells the mount called Perfected Juggernaut. Alderoth vendor sells the mount called Gold Toad Albatross. Azeroth sells you the vendor called Felstorm Dragon. Azkroth sells you the, the mount called Sulfur Hound's Leash. The Warlands vendor sells the mount called Reigns of Revenous Black Griffin, which is for the Alliance, and for the Horde one is called Horn of the White War Wolf. When it comes to the pets, we will see the following from the vendors. Asmore Vendor will sell you a pet called in Ruby. Asmeroth Vendor will sell you the Gildan. Asmeroth sells you Killabot 9000. Aldroth sells you the, the pet called Bythorn Hatchling. Azerath sells you the pet called Doom Rumble. Ascroth got the Jeepers for you. And Warlands Vendor got the Obsidian Warwell pet. Now when it comes to the trinkets, they will have the eye level of 402 and part of the gearing system, meaning it can be upgraded. These trinkets are veteran gear and can be upgraded all the way to 424 eye level. There are in total 8 trinkets that these time rift vendors sells you. Each trinket is called paracasual fragment off and then it's something after that. So basically, these are paracasual trinkets. All in all, out of these 8 trinkets, there are 2 healing ones, there are 3 trinkets that are for all characters, meaning it's got strength, agility, intellect on them. And there are two trinkets that are only for melee. Now, if, if you know your math, that equals to seven trinkets. And that's because one of them sold by the Warlands vendor and it got one Horde trinket and got an Alliance trinket based on what you are. They literally do the exact same thing though. I have checked out all these trinkets, how they work and all that stuff. And I have done a video about it previously. I'll put that link down below so you can check that out if you're interested. The vendors will let you buy their items with a currency that is new in patch 10.15 and it's called Paracausal Flakes. Now here's the thing, one mount costs 7,000 Paracausal Flakes. One pet costs 6,000 Paracausal Flakes. Most of the transmogs here cost between 250 to 350 Paracausal Flakes. Another type of reward we're getting in patch 10.15 are rewards from reputation. 
the new reputation faction in 10.15 is Sori Dormi. She's the one in charge of the defense and offensive actions against the alternative worlds. She's located mainly in the Time Rift event in Thaldrasis and in charge of the Time Rift event as well. Sori Dormi's reputation is divided into five ranks. We have that she'll consider you Anomaly, which is rank 1, Future Friend, which is rank 2, Rift Mender, which is rank 3, Time Walker, rank 4, and the Legend of the Multiverse, which is rank 5. You will start at rank 1. To reach rank 2, you need 7,000 reputation. To reach rank 3, you need 7,000 more reputation. To reach rank 4, you will need 10,000 more reputation. And to reach the max rank with Soidormi, you need 18,000 more reputation to reach rank 5. So all in all, you need in total 42,000 reputation. So what are these rewards then? Reaching rank 2 with Soidormi will give you a quest that you turn into Soidormi that is called a foreseeable friendship. This rewards 100 pair casual flakes and a toy which is a minute glass. With this toy, a new UI pops up when you use it where you will choose a timer, 1 minute, 2 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes or 1 hour on an hourglass and this hourglass is summoned for that time in front of you. Reaching rank 3 with Soidormi will give you a quest that you turn in and it's called a recognition of skill. This rewards paracausal flakes and an ensemble Rift Mender's Vestment Transmog. So at rank 3 you get Transmog reward. Reaching rank 4 with Soidormi will give you a quest that you turn in that is called One of Us. This rewards an item called Greater Encapsulated Destiny. Using this item will guarantee you either a mount or a battle pet. You can literally choose which one you want and you will get that the next time you complete a time rift. So it's like 100% loot on a pet or on a mount. So which one will it be? Let's say for example you pick mount, it will be one of those mounts that those vendors will have. If you pick a pet, it will be one of those pets that the vendor will have. We're gonna come back a little bit to how exactly that works so you will pick and choose proper uh, so you don't do any mistake here when you're actually going to choose this. Reach your rank 6 with Seridormi will give you the quest called Realize Potential. This will reward two things. One of the things is a title, Unparalleled. So that's title that you will get, the Unparalleled title. The other one you will get is an item called Greater Paracasual Chest. If you open up that chest, it will reward you with 70 flakes and one random item from the rift vendors and yes i know that is very crap i have submitted a report on that that it should be something totally different for example the paracasual flakes should be much more and instead of a random item from the rift vendor it should be something that is unique something that made you feel like wow that was a good reward after i grind all this rep but we will see all right, time for the event deep dive. So now, when you know the overall thing, what's happening in the event and what it's all about and what the rewards are and the reputation and all that, now I can actually take a closer look on how the event actually works. So this Time Rift event is divided in two stages. We start with stage one. When the event starts, you will first talk to Dormi and say that you want to participate in the event and the stage one will start and it'll last for eight minutes. During these 8 minutes, you'll complete tasks where you will fight them back to their own timeline. There are always two alternative worlds when stage 1 happens, out of these 7 worlds. So two alternative worlds per time when event is up that will invade our world during a time rift event in stage 1. You can open your map and mouse over the map, it will say exactly what two worlds are attacking at that time. There's a huge amount of different tasks such as fighting enemies, really cool and fun mini games. Not only fighting, you'll also help them out. You'll build cool things to help you to fight back and get more powerful. You will use your Drake even in some tasks where you're gonna fly around and hit other enemies. And much, much more. The tasks are mainly single player tasks, but there are also group tasks that pops up where you fight enemies back together as a community. So these different tasks that you will do most of them will be single player tasks, but there will be some community ones popping up there as well. Also in this event, on stage 1, you will see sometimes power balls that can drop from mobs. If you interact with a power ball, it will open up a UI where you can choose extra power, such as more healing or extra strength or agility or intellect. There are some that makes you like jump really far. These power balls are not class or spec specific like it was in Torghast, they're more like general powers. Doing all these things in stage 1 will give you essences. 
once you gather essences from something, you can see that it actually travels into the center of the platform of the event, and that's where it's gonna build up a portal for later use for stage two. You will have an essence bar from zero to 7,500. All players that are doing the time rift event will help out gathering those essences to fill up the bar. So this is a task that everyone helps out to do. The essence bar is divided into three checkpoints. The first checkpoint is when reaching 2,500 essences. This will reward a common box of tampered reality. This box will reward reputation with the new faction, the Soid Army. The second checkpoint is when reaching 5,000 essences. And this will reward a rare box called Box of Volatile Reality. The third checkpoint is when reaching 7,500 essences. And this will reward an epic box called Box of Collapsed Reality. There are 10 tasks in total for each player. The tasks have a specific pattern. The first task is to complete an objective. Completing that objective rewards 50 essences. The second task is to fight enemies during a short time. The third task goes back to completing objective again, and then it continues like that. It ping-pongs between completing objective task, and the next one is killing mob task, then objective task, killing mob task, and so on, until you have reached your 10 tasks in total, and then it finishes with that you just kill everything that you see until the time runs out and you will reach stage two. So, completing a task rewards 50 essences to the community bar when you do the objective one. Killing mobs rewards two essences for each mob to the community bar. When it comes to reputation from stage one, completing a task that has an objective rewards 20 rep. There are in total five tasks with objectives during those eight minutes, meaning 100 rep can be earned there. Killing mobs in the task area, and it's very important that I highlight task area. It is marked in the minimap how big the area is, and also what kind of mobs you're supposed to kill. If you kill these mobs, it will reward you one reputation per mob. When it comes to paracasual flakes in stage one, the currency you need for buying stuff from the time rift vendor, completing a task that has an objective rewards 20 paracasual flakes. There are five in total when it comes to these objective tasks, meaning 100 flakes can be earned there. Killing mobs in a task area, same as before, it has to be in that task area where you're in and those special enemies, it will reward you two paracasual flakes per mob. All right, let's go to stage two. Once the timer is over, a portal will open up in the middle of the platform and you will enter one out of seven alternative worlds and fight the boss in there. It is a maximum of five players that can enter for the same boss. You do not have to queue up or anything. If you enter, you'll be like grouped up with other players if the other players also entered. There are seven different bosses on stage two. You can mouse over the time rift event on the map and it will always be the first alternative world that are invading that is mentioned there are those two that will be the world that you will enter on stage two for example this time rift here enemies from other realities have entered our timeline demon invaders titan invaders in this case now we know that when we enter stage two it will be the demon world you're gonna enter now let's take a look at what bosses there are from the seven alternative worlds that you will enter and fight asmerloth when you enter asmerloth you will fight Gildan. Alderoth, when you enter that, you will fight Freya. Asmorn, when you enter in there, you will fight the one and only, the Lich King. Azeroth, when you enter there, you will fight the one and only, Illidan Stormrage. Azkroth, when you enter there, you will fight Fury of Nazoth. Warlands, Alliance Horde World. When you enter that place, you will fight Varian Ren. Azeroth, with dots between, don't forget the dots. When you enter that world, the robot world, you will fight Overlord Mechagon. There's actually a fixed rotation on which one of these seven worlds that you will enter. It will always start with Azmeroth, then Alderoth, Asmorn, Azrath, Azkroth, Warland, Azroth, and Asmongold. When the reset week occurs, the first one that will start will always be Asmerloth. So remember that when the event occurs every hour, so you can check beforehand what boss will encounter in stage two 
when you will do it. I'll put a link down below so you can actually find the link on my website for it where I've listed up these. And I'm also going to put like time urgent and a schedule for that and have it ready for live. When it comes to rewards from the bosses, this is what I know from PTR. Killing a boss rewards 200 para casual flakes, 170 rep with sorry dormi, 9 to 11 flight stones, chance on transmog from the timeless vendor. And here is the thing when it comes to the gear that you can get. Each vendor will have its own gear where the look is resembling that world. If you kill a boss from a specific world, let's say for example Asmorn, where you fight the Lich King, well then you only get gear and chance on mount and chance on pet and chance on all those things that the Scourge vendor sells. Then we have daily and weekly quests tied to the Rift as well. There is one daily quest and one weekly quest tied to the Time Rift at the moment when I make this video. The daily quest is located in Eon's Fringe on the middle tower in Thaldrassus. This is a fast daily quest that includes time traveling in some sort of time. You will meet characters such as Jaina when she was a kid or Andy when, we, when he was a kid. You'll meet many versions of Rathian and so on. This reward reputation also para casual flakes. At the moment it's 30 rep and it's 70 para casual flakes. Then we have the weekly quest. The weekly quest is called when time needs mending. You get this weekly quest by talking to Dormi, the same person that you talk to when you want to join an event. You complete this weekly quest by killing the boss on the second part of the time rift event. This quest rewards an item called Contained Paracasuality, which contains 1,800 reputation with Story Dormi, 1,920 paracasual flakes, one Drake Shadow Flame quest, a little bit of gold. You get an item called Encapsulated Destiny. This item, if you use it, it will buff you and it will guarantee you 100% that you will get some kind of loot from the next boss you killed in the time rift. And you also get an item called Diluted Time Capsule. This Diluted Time Capsule is actually a currency that you can use to buy 402 eye level weapons from the gear vendor in the time rift area where all the other vendors are. This vendor also sells gear that is not weapons, that is 402 for gold at the moment on the PTR. Last build, this was veteran gear, you could upgrade it to 424. This build, they took that away. So we will see how that's gonna turn out when this goes live. Then we have some achievements. There are also some achievements tied to the Time Rift vendor. And one of the biggest ones is one called Temporal Acquisition Specialist. In this achievement, you need to gather 14 items in total that comes from an alternative world. So one out of those seven worlds, which means that you will need to gather two items from each alternative world. One item is obtained by entering their world via their portal event. You'll have access to it only after you kill that boss. So after you kill that boss, don't rush out. Wait a little bit and see on the minimap where is that quest located and pick it up. The other one is obtained from stage one. And this one comes either from a quest item on the ground or NPC that has it or it drops from one of the group tasks. So make sure you always look at the minimap so you don't miss anything there as well. If you want the list on what the items are and where they come from, all that stuff, I have made a written guide on worldofmoody.com where you can check that. I'll put that link down below as well. Now that's a lot of links I'm going to put down below. I really hope you're going to remember that. Once you gather one of these items, it will be placed in the event area next to the vendors. And you can also interact with these items after they're placed there. And it gives some very cool, interesting information. Other achievements are Chronograde Connoisseur. You have to defeat all bosses in the seven different alternative worlds. Legend of the Multiverse. You have to reach maximum rank with Sword Dormy reputation, five out of five. Minute Mangarine. Get each pet tied to each alternative world, all seven, from each of the bosses. Collapse Reality. Get the highest essence point in the Time Rift, 7,500 essences, which rewards the Bag of Collapse Reality. Lock and Load. During Horde Alliance in stage one, Players can get a task to build Horde Alliance weapon racks and then you can interact with them and there are three we weapons in each rack and you can use them and fight the enemies. To complete this achievement, you need to have used all. So three from Horde, three from Alliance in total. Whew! Now that was a lot of information. If you check the whole thing out and you are literally here in the end, that means you are an amazing person. If you like the video, please hit the follow, please hit the, the likey and all these things. Um, if you wonder about anything, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you answer. Otherwise, you know, I'm on Twitter. You can check me out there. You can see updates about things about WoW when it comes to like new stuff coming out. You can also find information and guides on worldmoody.com, so you find it there. And also, you will find me do all these kind of things that I publish on stream. Um, Twitch.tv slash moody. Alright guys, until next time.